Hey guys, welcome to my 40 week pregnancy update. As you can see, I'm not in my bedroom, which I have been in all my other updates. I thought I would change it up and do it off the kitchen. And also Anthony's working in our bedroom right now. I guess it has better um, Wi-Fi than the guest room where he usually is and so I'm down here so I don't bug him. So <laughs> this is what you get for this week. Um, this is going to be my last pregnancy update and I'll tell you more about that later on in this video. So at 40 weeks, baby is the size of a beach ball. He's also the size of a small pumpkin or a small um, seedless watermelon. So he, I mean, he's full grown, he's huge, and I feel it. <laughs> so there's really not anything new going on with baby this week. He's just putting on weight and getting ready to come into the world. Um, whether he does that on his own or whether I kick him out is yet to be known. But um, yeah, there's really nothing new with him. Um, my app just kind of talked about how his skull is um, not hard, it's soft so that when he comes through the birthing canal, the skull plates can overlap each other and he can squeeze through it. So that's really all that's new this week. Um, he's just ready to be born and I'm ready for him to be born. 40 week symptoms for my last week. Um, everything hurts. Uh, all the time I wake up and my body's hurting and I go to bed and my body's hurting. It, it really is the truth. Um, my belly is pulling so low that my skin at the top is stretching and it hurts so bad. Um, it, the best position is when I lay on my side. Um, if I'm laying down, everything feels a lot better. But it's still really hard to find like a comfortable position. Even when I'm sleeping at night, I have a really hard time finding a comfortable position. My sleeping at night has gotten worse and worse and worse as the end draws near. Um, I will wake up several times. One night, I swear I was up every hour, hour and a half peeing. And um, it would take me forever to fall back asleep. Um, Two nights in a row, I got woken up at like 3 a.m. to pee, and then I tried to go back to sleep, and I had heartburn so bad that I had to take Tums. I didn't have to take Tums last night, which was really nice, but um, yeah, just the heartburn really isn't bad unless I'm laying down in bed at night, it seems like. So sleep is really, really hard to come by <laughs> these days. I just cannot sleep and stay asleep, and my mind is just going like crazy thinking about you know, labor and delivery and how life is going to change with this baby. So it's hard to shut your brain off as well. So yeah, sleep is really, really hard <laughs> this week. Baby is still moving around a lot, although his movements are not as powerful as they used to be, which is understandable because he is so big, he's probably running out of room to really do anything. He still gets the hiccups all the time and I still feel him most in the evening still, um, but I will feel him at all times of the day. I do stay very busy during the day chasing Grayson around, so a lot of times I'm always worried like, have I been feeling him move a lot lately? And then it's like as soon as I start thinking about it, I notice him moving. So that's good. I always just get a little nervous being overdue. I just don't want anything bad to happen to him because I just know the further you go, I feel like the more risk that you take um, and so I'm just consciously just keeping track of his movements. Um, I've never been told to do a kick count. I know a lot of people do them um, but my doctors never told me to do that. I've always had very like normal regular pregnancies so I don't do anything like that but I do um, try to every so often like just get in tune with my body and see if I can feel his movements and I always feel his movements so he's doing fine in there and he's he's obviously happy where he is because he's not coming out <laughs> I'm actually um, past my due date I'm today is my due date was September 9th and today is September 11th so I'm a few days past my due date 
I still get very um, hot at certain points, a lot of hot flashes. Um, I'll want to like pull my shirt off and let my belly hang out and that feels really good. Um, it is getting cooler outside. It's starting to become fall so that's been easier on me. But I have noticed that my energy levels have just been drained. Um, I will do something simple with Grayson and I will be so tired after that. I can't like do much without just feeling exhausted. And it's not like exhausted like I need to fall asleep, which that would be nice. But it's more like I just don't have the energy. Like I'm just so tired. I mean, I can definitely tell like this is the end. Like everything hurts and I don't have energy to do anything. You know, some women get like that last like energy spur to like clean the house and stuff and I don't feel that I don't feel like that nesting urge could be just because we just cleaned our house to put on the market and stuff but I am not feeling like an intense urge to nest or clean or anything like that I really haven't had any swelling I feel like in some women you can like see it in their faces just towards the end of pregnancy like the difference between when they weren't pregnant and when they are pregnant I don't feel like my face changes that much I feel like it stays about the same my weight gain I am at 28 or 29 pounds right now and I think that's I mean I'm at the end so that's probably gonna be it I finally hit the 150s at home. I've been hitting it at the doctor's office, but that's with like all my clothes on and my shoes on and everything. I finally hit it at home when I weigh myself nude. And yeah, I, I'm at like 151, 150, 151. So I've gained like, yeah, 28, 29 pounds, which is fine. I just didn't want to go over 35 pounds, which I definitely won't do. <laughs> so everything on that front is looking good. I will tell you about my 40 week doctor appointment, it was my last doctor's appointment. So like the past couple weeks I was running late, I've been running late a lot lately, I don't know why, I just think I have more time than I do. So I was running late, um, but I still got there, I was only like 5 minutes late, it really wasn't that big of a deal. I checked in, they took my temperature, I was like 97 something, so that was good. I left a urine sample. They caught me before I could go back to wait in the waiting room. They took my weight and I was, like I was saying, like 152 or something, 151, 152. And then they took my blood pressure. I'm always nervous about how that's gonna turn out, but it was great. It was like 110 over 80. It was great. I think the bottom number was a little high, but the top number is really what I was concerned about and it was great. She's like, every time she's like, that's a great number. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> so they took me to my room and I got undressed so that my doctor could check me. My doctor came in and um, we measure my belly. She said I'm measuring about 40 weeks, which I was a day. It was the day before my due date is when I had my appointment. So that was right on and we found the heartbeat. I don't really remember what the heartbeat was. I think it was the low 150s, but I can't really remember. It's been a couple days, um, but it was normal. And it was back on the left side again. Last time he had switched and she found it on the right side, he was back on the left side this time. So that was good. And then she went and checked me and I really wasn't sure how I was gonna do, um, but she said I was basically the same. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you're basically still at one and a half, maybe two, but basically one and a half. So I really, I hadn't made hardly any progression at all from last week to this week. So after that, we just started talking about what our next steps are, which would be induction, which I'm totally fine with. And she was like, okay, so looking at the hospital schedule, she's like, I could get you in tomorrow on your due date. And I was like, no, I just, I wasn't mentally prepared for that. And that was one of the days that I wanted to avoid um, just because it was my, my brother's fiance's birthday. So I didn't want to do that day. 
So then she was like, okay. She was like, um, they have a ton of openings on Friday, September 11th. And I was like, yeah, I bet you I know why there's a ton of openings because no one wants to have their baby on September 11th. Because that's when, you know, 19 years ago, the World Trade Towers got hit and everybody, it's just a day of sorrow and a day of sadness. And I don't want to have my baby on that day. So I was like, no, <laughs> I don't want that day either. And I was like, I really want to make it through like this week. Could we do like Monday or Tuesday next week? And so she was looking and she was like, well, I'm only in the hospital Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays. And I was like, okay. And she was like, so do you want to make it for one of those days? And I was like, I guess. And she was like, okay. She was like, we could do it like your last pregnancy and have you go in Tuesday night to get induced and then have you labor and then deliver sometime in the morning. And I was like, actually, could I just go in on Wednesday morning? Because I really hated that induction. <laughs> and she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, I didn't sleep at all. And I feel like I didn't even get to really experience anything because I was trying to sleep the whole time. I was frustrated and I'd rather just avoid that. And she was like, I totally get it. Um, she was like, I usually like to schedule night inductions because it's better for for her on her schedule just because she's like I try to avoid women giving birth between midnight and 5 a.m. just because she'd like to sleep too which I totally get and I was like yeah I totally get that but if this labor is going to be about half as long as my first labor it should only be about six to eight hours and she's like yeah I'm thinking six to eight hours and I was like so if I go in the morning on Wednesday I'll have it by the evening so she felt comfortable with that um, and she was like my appointment was at like 3.45 that day and she was like, it's already after four by the time we had this conversation. So the scheduling department like wasn't doing scheduling anymore. So she was like, let me call tomorrow. I'll get a time for you for Wednesday morning and then I will give you, or somebody will give you a call and let you know what time your induction will be. And then also we'll give you instructions about getting a COVID test. Um, she already warned me about this beforehand, but they are making all of their patients get COVID tests. Even if you have any type of procedure in the hospital, you have to get a, a COVID test. Um, and just so that they know, I mean, obviously if you're getting like any other surgery, if you test positive, they would cancel it and just schedule it for once you're over it. But with labor, they can't really postpone labor. So they just need to know if you're positive or not to like see what protocol they'll do. So. I was like, yep, that's totally fine. Just give me a call tomorrow and I will we'll go from there. And she was like, okay, great. You don't need to make any more appointments. Um, this is it. And that's basically how the appointment went. And so I was feeling great about that. M my family was thinking I was crazy. They were like, you could have this baby like tomorrow and have the pregnancy over with and not have to be in pain anymore, but yet you're gonna push it off another week. And I was like, I know I'm crazy, but I just, it's just how I want it to be. So I'm the one who chose that, so I'm the one that has to deal with it. So that was the only update I was gonna have for you guys, but more has happened since then. So let me tell you about the craziness that has happened just in the last couple hours, honestly. So we had that appointment on Tuesday. I waited all day the next day on Wednesday for them to call me to tell me this induction time and no one ever called. I waited the whole day and nobody called. So I was like, that's weird. So then the next day was Thursday, which was yesterday for me. Um, and I waited and waited and waited and still no call. So by about 2 p.m. I called the office and I left a message with the nurse because I didn't know who, who really to call and I was like, I just explained my situation like, hey, um, I'm supposed to be induced next Wednesday. I was supposed to be given a call to know like what time to be induced and nobody ever called me. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss a phone call or anything like that. And I was like, just give me a call back when you get a chance. And then I didn't receive a call back the rest of that day. Flash forward to today, which is Friday. Um, so that's two days after my appointment and I finally got a call at like 10 a.m. from the nurse and she was like, we're so sorry, um, we had miscommunication, we thought you were coming in for another regular appointment on Tuesday and that we would just schedule your induction on that Tuesday and go from there. And I was like, 
what? No, that was not what we discussed at all. Like, I told her, like, I didn't make an appointment for Tuesday. I didn't. Like, that was not the plan. She was supposed to call me and tell me a time to go in uh, for next Wednesday. And she was like, yeah, we realized that we had it all wrong. Um, she was like, but your doctor is at the hospital right now at labor and delivery and she's talking with the scheduling people right now. So um, we're gonna get you scheduled right now. And I was like, okay, great. Um, so then she was like, um, so I know we know you wanted Wednesday, but Wednesday's fully booked with induction. So we can't get you in Wednesday. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and she was like, yeah, so we could do Thursday or Friday. What would you prefer? And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to wait until next Thursday or Friday. So I was like, so obviously I was like Thursday because I don't wanna have to wait any more days than what I have to. So I was like, Thursday would be fine. She was like, okay, I'll tell her Thursday and then um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep you on the phone until we get you a time. So she'll figure out a time for you. And I was like, okay. And she was like, well, I have you on the phone. Um, here's the address to this building. You need to go get a COVID test. Um, you can get it up to four days in, in advance, but no um, earlier than that. And so she gave me the address. She's like, it's just a drive through. You don't even get out of your car. Um, you don't take anything with you except for like an ID. We're gonna send the, um, the paperwork to the place. So all you have to do is tell them your name and it should pull it up and they'll give you a COVID test and then the results will be sent to my doctor's office. So I was like, okay, so I got that all down. Um, and so I'm gonna go on Monday and get my COVID test and get that out of the way since that'll be within the time frame that they told me. And then she said that my doctor has scheduled me for induction at 9 a.m. on Thursday, September 17th. So, um, I was like super, super bummed because I just had it. Oh, I had it all planned for Wednesday. Anthony is taking off work on Wednesday, starting on Wednesday for two weeks or whatever. Um, my parents are going to come get Grayson on Tuesday and watch him for us. And now it's like everything was shifted back a day. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I have to wait until Thursday, next Thursday now. I was so bummed about that. I'm loving the induction time though, because she told me, that inductions can happen as early as 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7, or they could go as late as like 9 a.m. And so I was hoping for a later one, just to like try and get more sleep. Not that I have been sleeping a lot lately, but maybe. And thankfully I did get the 9 a.m. induction. So I'm super happy about that, but I'm not happy that I have to wait until Thursday to get induced. I don't even know if I'm gonna make it that long. I mean, I will be 41 weeks in one day. That is the longest I've ever been pregnant. I, I was not pregnant. I was only pregnant till 41 weeks exactly with Grayson. So we'll see if I, if I can hold on that long. I mean, I don't know. Otherwise, I'll just go into labor on my own. So that's the craziness that's been going on. Um, kind of a bummer, but at least I called and we got it all figured out. And I mean, it's all good to go now. They have me in their system. So I'm happy about that. But wow, what a... What a crazy ride. So I had to call, I had to tell Anthony um, so he could figure it out with work and I had to call my mom because she's taking Grayson. So we got it all figured out, but it's just a bummer that it was shifted back a day. But what can you do? That's just how it is. Apparently there are so many pregnant people getting induced that Wednesday was totally booked up, which I'm shocked about, but what can you do? So that was my doctor's appointment. Um, I'm happy to be done with those. Um, and I'm ready to have this baby. <laughs> this is a super long video. I'm so sorry about it. I'm almost done. Um, but I had to tell you about all that stuff with the induction. Um, let me show you my belly. Okay, so here's my belly at 40 weeks. I'm actually over 40 weeks, but here it is. My maternity shirts like aren't even fitting me anymore because my belly is just so big. But here it is. So I think that's going to be about it for this pregnancy update and all of the pregnancy updates until my next pregnancy and hopefully I still have energy to do that next pregnancy. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in. Obviously stay tuned. I have to get a COVID test. I'm getting induced if I don't go into labor on my own. I will definitely try to 
vlog as much as I can and you know keep a record especially since we can't have any visitors I'd love to get as much video as I can so that people can you know look back and see what happened so definitely stay tuned because there's a lot of really good videos coming up make sure to leave a comment down below keep me in your thoughts hopefully everything goes well hopefully I test negative for corona I'm not really worried about it but you never know, I guess I could be asymptomatic and not know it, but hopefully I test negative and hopefully everything goes well with delivery and soon I will have a cute little snuggly baby in my arms and I'm just so excited. So thank you again for watching this video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!